Hey guys, today I'm going to make a video showing you how to do the first encounter uh, skip where you can do the new frostbite glitch on the sparrow and then uh, pull your entire fire team to first encounter. Uh, people are going to say, oh, well, it's just quicker to do it normally. And yeah, it's true. If you, if you can do it well and do the sparrow part perfectly without dying, then it's going to be quicker just to do it that way. But if you play with LFG a lot, you know, sometimes it's going to take people 10, 15 minutes just to get their fucking chest, right? So I'm going to show you how to... You do this, the frostbite glitch and pull your entire team the first encounter. I'm going to be showing you how to do this on a titan. So if you are a titan, you're going to want to put on a lament. You're going to want the uh, stasis subclass with the catapult jump on. And I suggest putting on lion rampants also. When you spawn them for the first part and clear out adds, I suggest not using any of your sword ammo because if you're going to do it the way that I'm going to show you, you're going to pretty much want every sword swipe that you can get in. So after the door opens up on uh, your way to the sparrow part, there's going to be this hole in the ceiling that you want to jump up and into. To my knowledge, Cheese Forever is the person who discovered it. Um, I'll link his video in the description, but he probably could have done a little bit better of a job explaining how to get the frostbite glitch to activate, so I'm going to be showing you that. When you jump up, I found that you want to jump up and slightly to the right, and then it'll mantle onto the area that you can uh, land on. So once you come down here, you want to place your sparrow around this area right here, and there's a little bit of a delay. You have to wait for frostbite to come up. Once you see your frostbite increase, you want to get off of your sparrow. You want to make sure, though, that when you get off, that you don't move the sparrow from the spot that you were in when the frostbite started to increase. You want to step back a few steps, but not too far, so that you can still um, press the button to get onto your sparrow. And once you see that your frostbite stacks start to decrease, you then just press the button to get back onto your sparrow without moving forward to do so and then that should activate the uh, new glitch where you won't uh, be able to get frostbite at all. So basically you just need to make sure that your sparrow is in an area that can get frostbite and that you are not in an area that gets frostbite while you jump onto your sparrow. It's basically the same way that the old glitch worked, but you can just do it in this spot now. If you move your sparrow too far back after you've gotten the glitch to activate, then it will reset it. So make sure that once you hop back on your sparrow that you just push forward into the direction that I'm showing you. Before you jump your sparrow off of this cliff part right here, make sure that you sit here for a few seconds to make sure that your frostbite stacks aren't increasing and that you've got the glitch to work properly. Uh, if you happen to jump off and you realize that you didn't do the glitch properly and your frostbite starts to increase, you can just down yourself and you should spawn in an area close uh, up there to where you can do the glitch again. There are holes and pits in this area that you can fall down and into um, that you won't be able to get out of unless you know how to sparrow fly. Um, so just make sure that you avoid those spots and that you're landing and jumping onto solid ground. Just follow along the path that I'm showing you right here. It's basically a straight path. You just keep hugging the right. Uh, once you see this little thing that I'm on top of right now, you just want to scale that just by jumping up it. Um, there are plenty of spots where you can actually mantle onto. It shouldn't be that hard. So the spot that I just shot at right there is the hole that we need to get through to get back into the map. I like to jump onto this spot right here that I just showed you, and this is the part where we're going to start um, sword flying on a Titan. If you don't know how to sword fly in a titan, it's very, very simple. Um, this is why we have on catapult jump and line rampant. So once you get to the height of your jump, you're going to want to cancel the jump, swipe, and then jump again while repeating the same combo. So if we're looking at it, I'm going to jump, jump, cancel, swipe, jump, cancel, swipe, jump. And then I just land there because we're so close. That's why we need line rampants also just to make it a lot easier. Just remember it's jump, you have to cancel and then swipe. It's jump, cancel, swipe, it's over and over again. That's all it is. If you're on a warlock, you can heat rises or super up there and it's very, very easy. Um, I went on my warlock once to try it and I did it first try. On hunters, I think you can do something like quiver or something similar like that to get up there. If, once you're in the spot that I'm in now, we're back inside of the map. Um, so the spots that I just shot at, you can fall, land down there, and then just proceed normally. Um, so I'm going to show you what I do on a titan to make it even quicker. I'm going to sword fly all the way to the spot that we need to get to to get out of the map again so we can pull the entire team to first encounter. So this is why we're going to use a lament. 
This is the same thing where sword flying gets jump, cancel, swipe. But the only difference is in the middle of all this, we can add holding L2 and pressing R1, uh, the special effect that the Lament does. So if we're looking at its jump, cancel L2, swipe, jump, cancel L2, swipe, jump, cancel L2, swipe. And the reason we do this is because the L2 holds you in the air and then the swipe will swipe you further than you would uh, normally get. Once you land on this spot right here, you uh, keep moving forward. You can get lost in the snow sometimes, so as you're getting here, you just hug the, the rocks on the left. You want to make sure you see rocks on the left the entire time as your sword flying through the snow. Once you get to the spot right here that I'm showing you, there's an invisible ceiling. If you jump too high, you'll hit it and it'll kill your momentum and you might fall. So be careful about that. Jump up into here. Uh, this is the part that we're going to fall down and here's the tricky part. We're going to need to slide down this wall and we use our stasis melee ability to kill our momentum as we fall to land on this small piece of ground uh, that we need to land on. So as you're sliding down this rock, you cannot jump after you do your stasis ability. You can jump and you're going to need to land on this spot of ground right here. If you do not land on that spot, you will fall down and there is no way to get up, at least that I know of, on a Titan unless you spare a fly on up. So this is the only tricky part right here that you're gonna to need to practice. As you're sliding down, you cannot, and you don't wanna use your jump because you're gonna need it after you do the stasis ability. So as you're sliding down, I look for the wall to break right there, and that's when I use my, uh, my stasis punch, I melee, then I immediately jump and can glide and land on this patch of ground that you need to land on right there. If you're a warlock or a hunter, there is probably a way, at least on a warlock for sure, to use either Heat Rises or Icarus or Top Tree Dawnblade Super to uh, land here. It would be different, obviously, than landing on this Titan with the melee ability. Um, I do not know what that is, so you'd have to figure that out on your own. After you've landed, you have to jump over to this rock-looking thing right here. Um, do not take this jump for granted. I've made it all this way and then have failed this jump right here and have had to reset the whole thing. So um, the best way to do that is just to use another sword swipe and titan sword fly over if you can. You can probably just make it all the way over by using line rampants and catapult, um, but I just always play it safe and use the sword swipe. Follow along the path like I just showed you. Remember that you do have to do the little U-turn and turn around and hit that loading zone. And then once you hit that loading zone, then you're on the normal path that you would take to get to first encounter. Once you get to this part right here, if you are alone, then when you get to this door, it will not open. Uh, you'll get here and then you'll just be sitting at the door and there's nothing you can do. That's because you need to hit the first checkpoint uh, back at the very start of the Sparrow Maze. So if you're with an LFG team, this usually isn't an issue because the rest of the team will go through the door and hit that checkpoint. But if you're alone, just make sure that But if you want to open up the first encounter door for whatever reason, that somebody needs to hit this checkpoint. If you're doing this by yourself, obviously you just come here first and then uh, once you hit that checkpoint, just down yourself. Make sure that you down yourself close to this door right here so you don't spawn somewhere weird. And then um, when you respawn, it'll be back in the part where you can start the glitch again. So once you get to first encounter, um, obviously when you start the encounter by picking up the operator from the terminal, your entire fire team will be pulled. You can then just wipe and then obviously just continue on the raid as you normally would. The thing is, if you just pick up operator and kill yourself after that, it's going to spawn in your entire team alive, which uh, you might not think would be a big deal, but it's always not as easy as you might think to down yourself on first encounter because the ads don't hurt very much. And uh, watching five LFG randoms try to figure out how to down themselves is uh, harder and more painful than you might think. So what I'm showing you right here is how to down yourself quickly enough after you start the encounter um, to wipe the entire team without them spawning in alive. The problem is there's a very, very small um, window of time that you can down yourself and have them not spawn in alive. So what you want to do, you want to have something on like a rocket launcher, or grenade launcher, something that's going to instantly kill you with the one shot. And as soon as you pick up operator, you want to time it properly and down yourself. So by timing it properly, I mean that if you do it too early after picking up operator, this is going to happen like I'm showing you right here, where it's not going to start the wipe screen. And it's just going to allow you to respawn while the entire uh, fire team is joining in. 
but also if you do it too late it's not gonna work uh, properly either like I'm showing you right here so the reason for this uh, as you might figure out is that you need to be the only person in an active encounter who is dead and then the wipe timer will start and wipe the entire team no matter where they are so if you're doing it too early then while well, you were down before the encounter started so you can just respawn and if you do it too late it's given everybody time to join allies and spawn in alive so then now they're the alive people and won't start the wipe timer if people have ssds or ps5s um, this will be even harder to do properly this is just timing that you need to get used to i'm showing you right here it's a very very small window that you're able to do this uh, properly so not a big deal if you can't get this to work right if the team spawns in alive just have everybody down themselves it's not that big of a deal also if there's anybody else in the area that you're in for whatever reason they're obviously going to be alive and it won't uh wipe start the wipe timer and uh also if you are flying somebody in they will spawn in to the person who's furthest along so after you hit that loading zone that I showed you a while back, after you do the jumping part and fall down the wall, once you hit that loading zone, if somebody joins and spawns in, after that they will spawn in the area that you're in since you're furthest along. That's pretty much it for the video guys. The rest of the video is just going to be the alternative option on how to get to the spot to um, get to first encounter if you don't want to Titan sword fly uh, for whatever reason over to that wall. It's the same thing. So then once you uh, just get to the spot right here, instead of starting the Titan sword fly for a long time, you just fall down onto this uh, spot right here. Um, this is just the, the I think that like the second bubble in the sparrow part, and you just proceed normally, you'll recognize it really quickly. Make sure that you're turned the right way, but if, even if you're not, you'll see that it's uh, the wrong way pretty quickly. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys.